So just jumping right in, um, section 118 of the 2011 code, uh, one, chapter 1 is general requirements and section 18 is seismic requirements. So there are five shear wall types. We're going to be focusing really on the reinforced shear walls, ordinary, intermediate, and special reinforced shear walls, and not on the uh, unreinforced shear walls. The special sh reinforced shear walls, as you can see, can be used in any design seismic design category and in fact are the only shear wall type that is allowed in seismic design category D and higher. In A, B, and C we can use ordinary or intermediate reinforced shear walls. There is some prescriptive reinforcement required. It's perhaps easier to just show it with a diagram here. So for ordinary and intermediate shear walls then there's reinforcing at the top of the wall at structurally connected floor and roof levels, above and below openings. Um, then there's either joint reinforcement at 16 inches on center or bond beams at 10 feet. Typically that would probably be joint reinforcement in lower seismic uh, zones. And then um, there's vertical reinforcement at the ends of the walls, at, on the sides of openings, at control joints and so forth. Then there's also vertical reinforcement required at every 10 feet in the wall for intermediate uh, reinforced shear walls that 10 feet is reduced to 4 feet. And that's the only change in prescriptive reinforcements between uh, ordinary and intermediate shear walls. For special reinforced shear walls then there's some um, requirements in terms of the maximum spacing of vertical reinforcement one-third the length of the wall, one-third the height of the wall, 48 inches for running bond, 24 inches for not laid in running bond. There is also um, then requirements in terms of reinforcement ratios. The total reinforcement has to be greater than 0.002 and each of the reinforcement ratios in the vertical and horizontal direction have to be greater than 0.0007 and shear reinforcement has to be anchored around vertical bars with a standard hook. We'll look at some examples and see that in a little more detail. In seismic design category D and higher, the requirement is for type S or type M, um, cement lime mortar or mortar cement mortar. There's basically three types of mortar, masonry cement, mortar cement, and Portland cement lime mortar, and only Portland cement lime mortar or mortar cement, which is considered to be equivalent to Portland cement lime mortar, um, are allowed in seismic design category D and higher, and it has to be at least a type S mortar. One change in the 2013 uh, code is that masonry cement mortar is permitted for fully grouted members, so it's relaxed a little bit. So just a brief review there of shear wall types. Um, we'll do a brief review or just an overview if you're not familiar with strength design of masonry. Very similar to reinforced concrete design. Just a few differences here. Um, we'll look at some of the equations here that for axial compression for uh, shorter members, H over R less than 99, and longer slender members, H over R greater than 99. We have these formulas here for our nominal strength here. The point 0.8, the initial point 0.8 there is to account for accidental eccentricity. The A sub S T is the area of laterally supported steel, tied steel, so actually that is often zero. Typically in most walls we do not have uh, the lateral support, the ties, it would be more in like pilasters or columns that you'd have that. Given the um, equation over here the, in black, the 2011 code in blue, just a brief mention, in 2013 we had a major reorganization of the code uh, as a result really of input from designers that our first chapter general requirements had just grown to be uh, quite large, so that was split up into multiple chapters. So chapter 3 is strength design in 2011 code. In the 2013 code, it's chapter 9 now, so a little difference there. Not really much change in the requirements. This uh, term here for a nominal axial strength for H over R greater than 99 is actually Euler buckling. It does not 
initially appear as such. It has F prime M here. In masonry, um, we take the modulus of elasticity directly proportional to F prime M. For uh, concrete masonry, the modulus of elasticity is 900 times F prime M. So since we have that direct relationship, we can write this in terms of F prime M. But this equation is really an Euler-Buckling type equation.